welcome. My name is Mrs. To Us, and this lady right here, that is Mrs. Truby. Say hi. Hi. And we are here with Mr. Cole, our fearless leader and principal at Mojave High School. Welcome, Mr. Cole. Hey there. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So excited. Very excited about this. Hey, do you want to do a quick intro about yourself? Yep. Um, as most of you know, I am Principal Cole. You probably get the words of wisdom sent directly to your email every single day. I've um, been principal at Mojave High School now for four years. Um, we'll start part of my fifth, I guess, actually soon. But I've been part of Mojave High School family for around 10 years since the start of turnaround, going back to like 2011, 2012. Former principal at Bailey Middle School. So I probably had some of your brothers and sisters up on the mountain also. And I am everything orange and green from my shoes to my coat to my sunglasses. Mojave High School is the is the place for me. And also on a personal note, I live in North Las Vegas, just minutes down the road behind uh, behind Legacy High School. So I, I shop at the same grocery store as our families, uh, go to the same uh, fast food places. You can probably tell by looking at me, all of those kinds of things. So just everything about the uh, community I, I Holy love. Oh, that is so great. So, um, Struby, why don't you fill them in on what's about to change? Well, um, our schedule first is going to have a huge overhaul. It's going to be uh, completely different. Um, classes are going to look very different as far as like people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, bathroom situations, water fountains, um, things, are and how and how long you're physically there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Things things are are going to be changing all over as we as we move through this and into the first phase of our return to school, which I'm so happy about. I'm so excited to see mm -hmm. kids again. I am too. I am so the the. Sure. I am so excited to just meet some of my kids, all my kids who are coming. Like they're all so excited to meet me in person. And that, oh, that makes me so excited. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not excited about having to wear real pants. And, and I think that the students are on the same, on the same wavelength. <laughs> 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 Nobody wants to put on the real pants again, but here we are. Um, we had students who submitted questions for Mr. Cole to answer. Are you ready for this, sir? Ready to go. Here's here's uh, how I'm going to answer most things. Okay. I'm going to go into a ton of detail on these questions today, but we will send um, a frequently asked questions thing out and just some more detail on, on some of the things that are going on next week. We'll send a kind of a virtual tour that Ms. Tuiz has put together for us on Monday, um, just so that especially freshmen that have never been on our campus, are gonna get a chance to kind of see what it looks like, those types of things. And I believe Dr. Smith is planning kind of just a short tour that first couple of days where our freshmen come back so that they can see, and we have some Stuco kids, shh, um, be, let's be quiet about that because I don't know, but uh, we have some Stuco kids planned on helping out give that tour just so that our, our freshmen especially can kind of find out what it's like to be at Mojave High School. What does the building look like and those things because they haven't been here. So yeah. we'll, we'll do those things and I'll just give just, kind of shorter answers now, but at least now we'll have, hey, this is where we need to go so that we're sending out information next week where students will be ready. And the one thing I keep stressing to staff, right? This is for eight weeks. Um, whatever we have planned for Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday and Friday, it very well could change after Monday, right? We could think that we're doing something Monday, the first day on the 22nd when uh, students step off the bus, and then we realize, oh, that was a horrible way to do it. Let's change it this way. So so let's all just uh, be as patient as we can. Let's uh, let's enjoy the fact that we're going to have students walk in our hall because I am so excited to just have adults come back on the 15th. Our teachers are going to be here. And then to, to finally have students here again full time starting on the 22nd is just beyond exciting for me. Well, can you put on your little turban and look into a crystal ball and have the crystals around you? Because the biggest question that I saw was, are we going to go back 100% next year? Yeah, I think it, so. If I was that person making a prediction, I would say there's every chance that next year will look more normal. I don't think it's going to look like it was prior to March of uh, 2020, but I think it's going to look more normal. I think it'll be five days probably. Um, I think we'll have a lot more students that are 
full time in person learning instead of distance learning. But I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't still a district opportunity to have distance learning of some kind. And hopefully Mojave High School could still offer that too, so that our students could still be a part of our clubs, part of our activities, part of our athletics, and still be a part of their home school and the community um, and be here. But if, if, if distance learning is working for some of our students, and it certainly is, let's continue to offer education in a different way. But I think it, I think it will look different next year. I think it'll be closer to, closer to normal than what this hybrid is gonna be for this first couple of weeks. Um, where we probably are starting to go back five days for the 21-22 school year, most likely. That's just my guess. I don't have official word, but that is my guess for sure. Okay, Mr. Cole, next question for kids is, is it optional? That's all the question asks. I'm assuming uh, they're asking, is going back on campus optional? That's I, I, the I assume that too. Yeah. I, I think that's a great question. I've gotten some emails about that. Um, hey, Mr. Cole, do we have to come back on campus? Um, distance learning is working for me. I'm, I, I like the process. I like what we're doing. Um, and I think the, the answer is, yeah, it's absolutely optional um, with some caveats, right? It, it's also, unfortunately, whatever cohort families signed up for way back in November, that's where we're at right now. So even though I realize everything's changed since November, there wasn't another survey. There wasn't enough time for us to do another survey. So whatever was chosen in November, that's your cohort. And all the students should, should be able to find that information in their Google email that was sent out to them. Um, but so if you're cohort A, you're coming back. Cohort B, you're coming back for a couple of days. Cohort C, you're going to continue distance learning. And it's really easy, by the way, if you're cohort A or B and you want to stay cohort C, just keep showing up online, right? Don't, don't get on the bus on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. Just stay online, let your teachers know and um, that, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue with cohort C. By all means, send me an email. Lots of students have all this year. That's one of the, I think one of the positive things about going through this pandemic really is maybe the personal contact that, that I personally have been able to have with families and students because they have, they've been really good about advocating for themselves. Hey, Principal Cole, can you, can you let my teacher know that A, B, or C is happening? So, you know, send me an email. Hey, I, I want to change cohorts either way, right? I want to go to A or B if possible. We'll put you on a wait list and we're going to start making some of those changes so that there won't be transportation right away, but that students can go come back live too when they're ready. And we'll, we'll let them know there's a process for that, but they're not forever stuck in their current cohort. But if somebody decides, hey, cohort C is waiting for me or is working for me, they can stay cohort C through the rest of the year for sure. That's great because that was actually the next question is, um, am I able to switch cohorts due to family reasons or because I don't feel safe to attend? And I think you hit the nail on the head. If they need to stay at home, if they like the distance model and, and because the survey was given so early in the year that kind of feeling where they're at right now um, and doing what feels safe for them, I love that we're advocating for that. Yeah, for sure. And I think it, I think it's, it works good the other way too, right? We've had, I've had some parents contact me. Hey, am I going to have the opportunity? I, I really think now from a, from a social con context, you know, I want my, I want my student there. I want my child there. And that works the other way too, right? If, if the sooner we can get more kids back on campus, the sooner we get more students here, the better also. It's just, it's going to take a little while. And most importantly, this first week, we want to see what that looks like, right? With, with, who's ever already signed up, what's it look like when they when they come through the door so we can make adjustments over spring break as necessary. And then we'll start adding some, some students back that requested A, requested B. But to stay C, it's really easy. Quite frankly, you're gonna keep, like we're not changing any teachers, we're not changing any schedules for students. You're gonna keep who you have. I know that was a question also probably that, that uh, people and teachers were having the last couple of weeks. Hey, am I gonna lose the kids that I've had in my classroom? And the answer to that's no, we're not changing a single schedule. Um, so it's really just that simple. If you want to stay C, even if you're signed up, even if you got an email from us saying, hey, you're cohort A or B, stay home. Just keep logging on to Google Meet like you've been doing. Contact your teacher, stay in touch, keep doing your work, keep being successful. So I think another question that we have had a lot of this, we might have had a lot of these ones asked was how would lunch work? Yeah, so probably the most disappointing thing for me of the, of, of the whole situation is really how meals are going to happen in general. Um, one of my favorite things, and you guys have been at Mojave for a little while now with me, is standing out in the quad during lunch, right? You know, they have student activities, whether it's dance or whether, you know, guitar is performing or band or choir, um, and just having students come up and say hello, introduce themselves, or me getting a chance to know, to know our students in a different way. So that's probably the most disappointing 
um, aspect of all this for me is unfortunately there's not going to be meals on campus really in the traditional sense. Everybody's going to be offered a breakfast um, prior to walking through the door, and it's going to be what we're calling grab and eat. So you're gonna you're gonna grab a breakfast, you're gonna start walking to your class, you're gonna kind of be eating it, right? Yep, unfortunately, um, and that's for all of our safety as much as possible, so that we don't have to take our masks off in classes. Like it's not just important to me that that our students are safe. We also need to make sure that that our staff is safe, and so we're gonna grab and eat. Um, that doesn't mean that. We're going to be screaming at you in the hallways to, to 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 get it done or whatever, but it just means that hey, as we go to class, let's try to get this done so that we can keep everybody safe. And then for lunch, it's going to be the same way. Everybody's going to have an opportunity to grab a lunch, but it's going to be as they leave campus. So they'll get ready to get on the buses, or they'll get ready to get in the car with their families, and we'll have we'll have a station set up either at the front by the flagpole. So if they leave that way to walk or get into cars with family members or at the buses where they can just walk out, grab it, put it in their bag, get on the bus, probably eat at home. I'm sure that the uh, drivers aren't going to allow you to eat on the buses or whatever, but we will still offer breakfast and lunch. Um, it just won't look like we want it to, right? I, I wish we could sit in the quad and socialize and do all those things. It's just not that time yet. Hopefully as we get closer to next year and as we open back up next year, hopefully I think by then almost all adults that want to have access to the vaccine will have been vaccinated or had the opportunity it sounds like um, even sooner than we thought originally so that's good and maybe we can start getting back to some of those quote unquote more normal activities and behaviors and lunch being one of those I think that's an important time Mike that's the my own my own son who's a freshman in high school uh, that's what he asked me all the time hey when am I going to be able to hang out at breakfast and lunch with my friends right that's you know education is going to happen classes are going to happen but when do I get to be a normal kid yeah. or a normal student and and, and I, I, I agree with him and I agree with our students that have those same questions. That's an important part of, of being a high school student. It really is. Um, hey, Sloan. She made a special appearance. Yay, Miss Sloan. Hey, Jen. So another student, beautiful little young, bright, beautiful student said, will all my teachers be there? They're very concerned that they want to see all of their teachers. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And as you two know, especially, right, one of the things that I've struggled with the most is who, which teachers are physically going to be on campus or, you know, some, some of that stuff really weighs heavily on me. You guys know that I'm a heart led leader. I'm an emotional guy. Um, tears come easily to me, even, even thinking about this, this topic, right. It makes, makes me start to kind of tear up and, and because I want to make everybody safe, right. If I could, if I could wrap everybody in Mojave, I've said this to you guys before in a giant bubble and keep everybody safe in the Mojave community, I would do it in a second. So most likely, most of your teachers will be here, but there's, there's, there is a chance that some have taken advantage of district, uh, district opportunities to work from home. We've had a handful of those uh, based, on, based on need. Obviously, I can't share what that need is or who it right. is, right here, but, but students will find out when they get in the class. But the good news is their teachers will still be providing lessons. They'll still be on the Google Meet. We'll just have okay. We'll just have somebody else there physically in the room also. So it'll be kind of like having a having two teachers, right? You have a teacher in the room, and then one also kind of online helping us through those types of things. So it, that part will look a little bit different. Um, it won't impact a whole bunch of our students, but certainly some of our students will have an impact where they might walk into a classroom and, hey, that's not who's been providing this online instruction for me the whole time. So physically, somebody else is there. But online leading lessons is still going to be that same teacher in every case as of right now. So one student asked, are we going to use Chromebooks most of the time? Yeah, that's another another really good question. Yeah, everybody should bring their Chromebook with them every day. So learning is going to look almost exactly like it has since last March. Everything's going to still take place on a Chromebook. Um, you're still going to have your, your teacher still going to be providing lessons via via online learning, so via the Chromebook and stuff like that. So you're gonna wanna have that charged, ready to go, bring that every day. Please put it in a, in a backpack. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna be carrying it under your arm just as that, so have a backpack. In fact, uh, nobody on staff knows this yet, but I think it's on March 27th, Clark County School District Police is actually gonna be doing a backpack giveaway here on our campus. So families from all over North Las Vegas are gonna be able to come here and and uh, get get some backpacks. I think they told me that at Valley High School, they gave over a thousand backpacks away um, on March 6th. So we were another school that was chosen for that opportunity. So not just us, but you know our elementary uh, siblings and those types of things. More information will be coming on that. But by all means, make sure your Chromebook's ready to go. Bring it with you every day. Have it charged, ready to go. 
Um, your learning is going to look almost exactly like it is right now. But if you're on campus, you might have some extension opportunities in person. And then there might still be some asynchronous opportunities going on while students are still learning at home. So who would have thought a year ago that we'd be talking about asynchronous learning and all those types of things. We all had to learn new words, right? Like, I don't know that I had ever said the word asynchronous until March of 2020, but here we are and now kids understand it and you guys understand it. And <laughs> we're speaking a whole different, whole different. I don't language. understand it. Understand uh, it? <laughs> Just for the record, it's kind of like uh, the difference between formative and summative assessments. I always have to stop and think about it for a little bit to know the difference. So well, the, to make, to make everyone feel better, I don't understand it. As you might remember the first couple of months, I couldn't pronounce it, but I've even now got to the point where I can do that. So here we are, we've, we've grown, we do better, we know better, we do better, right? Oh my gosh. You know, what's really funny is, as you said, it was a year ago and I posted a TikTok one year ago mm -hmm. that I recorded at Mojave and it was the Mojave full house. Do you oh, remember? Yeah. I do. Yeah, yeah. I saw that this morning. Huh. Yeah. My memories. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I, wanted, I would love to do another one when we finally come back. Yeah. Um, socially distanced, okay, but still, we're still the same family. We just have a mask on now. Yeah. yeah. I think that was the first TikTok of yours I ever saw, right? Like, I don't know if I even knew TikTok existed until I saw that, actually. So wow. Yeah. 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 Follow me at Mrs. Two S. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, you were talking about having students, you know, with their backpacks, bringing their Chromebooks, things like that. Another student just said, "What do we bring?" Yep. Yeah. So for the most part, really, that's that's it, right? You know, you you throw the Chromebook in a in a backpack and 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 show up. You don't. You're not going to really need paper, pencil, traditional school supplies like you would have. A year ago because again for the same reason right like we, we're not going to be handing out a lot of tests and taking those things back in just because until everybody's vaccinated all those types of things COVID's even more under control we just we just want to keep everybody safe so it's still going to be the the primary learning tool is still going to be the chromebook so you don't need the traditional traditional supplies however i would say um, have a bottle of water as part of your school supplies right whether it's whether it's a refillable bottle that you fill at home or whether you bring a couple water bottles, but there won't be the same access to uh, water fountains that there was prior to COVID just for safety concerns. You probably noticed that when you go anywhere right now, you know, all those things are shut down for a while. You couldn't even get like a soda pop for a soda pop. I, Iowa just came out of me. You couldn't get a soda um, from a, from a convenience store for a second, right? When, when this first happened, everything was shut down. So water fountains and those things. So bring a bottle of water, consider that like an essential school supply. At the start, we are gonna have some to share with students because you know we wanna make sure that we're meeting the very basic needs, but we only have so many bottles of water even on campus, right? And right. Who knows, you know, if we're short of delivery or something like that one week, then we don't have them. So just have that be a supply that you're gonna always bring with you every day, whether it's a, one of those big water bottles that you fill at home before you go or whatever, or, couple water bottles. Yep. Miss, Miss Tuas has one, something like that. Just be prepared with water. You're definitely going to want that to be one of your everyday essentials as you're coming to school. So uh, our next question is a very heated topic, a uh, very controversial topic here. Will we be taking all our classes or four classes per day, like what we do in online class? So this is probably one of the biggest misconceptions if you're following along on social media at all right like whether you follow any kind of student page teacher page parent page or whatever I think we had I think we had the assumption that when school happened it was going to be like we just turned a, a water faucet back on and it just happened and everything was going on but unfortunately students will be showing up for two periods a day basically and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into the schedule because it's there's no way right now just that I can just explain it like most of us don't even have it completely understood yet. Like we're just going to have to live it to get it figured out, just like Mojave's schedule always is. But there's only going to be two periods, so you're going to you're going to get here at about 8:40. Um, yep, buses will drop you off around 8:20 if you're a if you're a bus rider, and then you'll have your first class for about 105 minutes, so it's a little bit longer even. And let's say that's probably going to be, I guess, on the 22nd for freshmen and seniors, that's going to be first period. So you'll get here 8:40. It'll be first period, 105 minutes. Um, you'll have that first period of class, and then at 10-something, we'll have a little break, 
10 minutes for a passing period, and then we'll transition to third period. So the first day you're gonna have first and third period, and that's the only day I'm even gonna talk because I don't have it in front of me. I didn't print it off, I don't have it in front of me. So I'm not gonna even make guesses about what's happening next, but you're just gonna have those two periods. Then you're gonna go home. So then you're gonna get on the bus, you're gonna grab your lunch, you're gonna go home, and then you're probably gonna finish um, fifth and seventh period. It might even be reversed. Fifth and seventh period at home. And they're just, and they're just short periods. They're just 30 minutes or so once you get home, but you do have to log back in. I think there's a 45 minute break before you have office hours or some opportunities for wellness checks for teachers to check in with kids and then kids have to get back on. And that schedule will be, I think it's already been shared out and it'll be continuously shared out next week so that everybody has that. And teachers will go over kind of what they think it's gonna look like. We've provided a week by week schedule for teachers so they can help help our students out to understand, hey, this is what you're gonna do, but it's not gonna look like it's not going to look like a one, three, five, seven, like it would have last year or two, four, six, eight, or any of those things. It's two classes a day in person. Then you're going to head home and, and get on for the remainder of the day. So not a best case scenario, but we're happy that we're just going to be welcoming students back at all. Right. Like let's, let's get people back through our, through our doors. Let's be a school that's open. Let's be a building, not just not, let's not just have school. Let's be a building again. Right. Let's be a community. Right excited about that. It's going to, it's going to look different. It's going to take some getting used to, but I think it's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good way to get back at it and, and uh, kind of figure some things out. If it was up to me again, and I think I've said this to staff, I would have just turned it on and said, Hey, let's bring back anybody that wants to five days a week and we'll make it, we'll make it work the best we can as safe as we can. Um, and that probably would have been reckless of me. So thankfully there's people thankfully there's people that are uh, looking out and saying, Hey, let's do it safely for a while to make sure that a building can, can handle certain things or certain ways. And, and there's practice making sure that it's right for kids and for staff. And so that's what we're doing. And it'll look a little bit different and we'll get through it together. You know, this next question might, might be something that you know the answer to, and it definitely came up more than once. I think kids are kind of concerned about their bus routes. When are they gonna get their bus route? How will they know what time they're being picked up? Is that something that's being um, communicated separately from transportation or do you that's, know? Yeah, transportation, I believe, is going to send that information out on March 17th, I believe. Um, and we don't have anything to do with that. And I'm not even sure if it's the same number of routes as normal. I know it wasn't for ACT, um, but that will be coming out uh, via, via parent link through the transportation department. So okay. it, should be, it should be by the end of the day, Wednesday. I can see why they're anxious about that because they're trying to plan it in their head like, okay, when I get up in the morning, how much time do I have to get to the bus stop to do this, to do this? And I yeah. love that they're so forward thinking, you know, oh, it's yeah. our kids are trying to plan. What? That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They've really, I think the advocacy that I've seen from, from our students and I always apologize because I call them kids. Um, because I know they're not right. They're, they're young men, young women. But just to me, I want to treat all of our students like it's my own child as they walk through the doors. And so, um, I'm just really proud of the advocacy that so many of our so many of our students have shown. Right? They've they've reached out to counselors on the, their own. They've reached out to you on their own. They've reached out to me, you know, with whatever questions. Right? They just have the courage. I think that that I promise when I was 15 years old, 16 years old, I would not have had the courage. To, to send an email to my principal or to, to reach out to my teachers in certain ways. I know I wouldn't have, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't able to order my own hamburger at a restaurant, right? Like I was that kid. So I'm just really proud of our students at, at the maturity that they've shown that, you know, they wanna be back here, but they've also just shown great growth and determination and, and advocated for themselves and doing what they know is right for them. So I'm really proud of them. Me too. And I can't wait to meet some of them in person. Like I, every day, every day I have kids going, bestie, are you ready to meet me in person? Wow. Or like counting down the days. So oh, a- I just, I, I, I want to greet all of our students. Like they're my children too. Like they I just, I love them all so much. So next question, and we may not have a full answer for this yet, but this student asked, when will sports be available? Yep, another great question, and I am not the expert in this area at all, right? I know that sports is going to happen. I know that clubs and activities are going to happen. So I'll answer this. I know that clubs and activities are not going to start officially until like April 12th, I believe is what Dr. Smith told us um, the other day. So, so, so I'll say that first, because I know that that date was pretty firm. Um, starting on the 22nd, though, there are going to be intramurals, I believe, for 
our fall, our spring, I keep messing it up because it's the first sports season of the year, right? I keep calling it fall, but for our spring sports, I think intramurals will start on the 22nd for sports like baseball, softball, um, women's golf, track. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting one for anything that's for oh, swimming. Yep. Swimming. So anything that's happening in the spring, those, those intramurals or at least those initial meetings will take place on that the 22nd. And by the way, that doesn't, that's whether they're A, B, or C students. You don't have to be an in-person student to take advantage of athletics. So you could be cohort C and show up here at the end of the day, not before the end of the day, but at the end of the day at 306, right? You still got classes, you still have all those things because they're going to be grade checks, but you can be a cohort C student fully online, fully distance, and still take advantage of our athletic opportunities this year so whether it's spring sports or whether it's intramurals that happen later for i think like football and some of the other fall sports um, that information will be coming out and that'll be happening starting the 22nd and then your club advisors some of those things have been going on all year right so just keep stay in contact with our club advisors no matter what it is or you know if you're in choir if you're in band we want to have some of those things right like we want to have a band performance this year still we want to have a dance performance we want to have a choir performance there won't be people watching some of that stuff there won't be spectators here however we want to have we want to have those activities we want to we want to give our students the opportunity to shine right and so whether that means somehow we record it and send it out or share it or whatever um, I think our I think our theater teachers wants to do some a play, um, which I can't wait. I think you guys know that I love theater type stuff. Um, so watching 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 all of those activities, I can't wait. I might I probably be the only person there, right? Because you got to have an administrator. You have to have an administrator be part of it. So I'm going to be there, um, and I'll probably be loud and obnoxious because I'm going to be so proud of everybody. But but we'll do the best we can with that. So. Well you know that my daughter does go to Mojave and she's yep. part of the theater program. She's oh. a theater tech. And no. so you'll have a, you'll have somebody sitting a couple feet away from you, a <laughs> couple seats away and I'll be cheering for the tech. That was great lighting. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so um, we had a lot of just qu really easy rapid fire questions. What time does school start? 8.40. There we go. Um, is someone going to show us around? Yes. Um, let me see. Two ways, Where do freshmen ways. find their classes? How how do they find their yeah. classes? Yep, we'll we'll have a tour, and we have your your uh, your video that's super important. Fantastic! And finally, are we going to be punished if we're late to our class? No, you are not going to be. Um, so so one of the things that we want to do is be a welcoming place, right? Like, hey, it's how would a freshman know? How they're going to get from the gym to the 800s hallway until they start doing it right so it, it's really about the opportunity what's going on in the classroom and not hey how long does it take there we certainly may say things like hey let's go to class or let's let's do those kinds of things because we still can't be we can't be hanging out and you know being in large groups and stuff like that but but yeah it's 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 not going to be about oh you're in trouble because you're 15 seconds late for a class or any of those types of things. And we know that it's gonna take a little while for people to understand where they need to go. Right, exactly. I feel the same way. I hate when it's like, I'm not gonna nitpick you for 10 seconds during a panorama. Right, no. Not during, during a Panda, Panda Express. Express. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now I want lunch. That wasn't even planned. That's awesome stuff. That's good stuff. <laughs> Um, this is kind of like a specific question for a specific person. Um, I think it's for a group a of lot of people. seniors. Yeah. This. Um, this person says, I don't have an eighth period. Do I just leave the school because I don't have any classes left to do after six period? I only have three classes a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great question. And yes. Right. So it's one of the, this is like the first year that we've had many students with uh open periods right so that's unusual at mojave we've uh, never really allowed very many of those because there's criteria and things and we're having we're having more students reach that which is great news right that means that that more students are achieving at levels that we that we would hope that they would but yeah if you have an open period so let's say that it let's say that your open periods first period for example you wouldn't show up at 8 40 
And that was part of the process when we originally scheduled those. If, you, if you're requiring transportation, you shouldn't have an open period, right? So you're gonna get here, somebody's gonna drop you off or you're gonna drive or you're gonna walk or whatever, and you're gonna get here in time for the next class. And it's the same way at the end of the day. If, it's, if you have an open period and you don't have a class, see you later. Now, if you're out for a sport or you have clubs or activities, then you might not go home, right? We were trying to figure out, hey, where are we gonna have students wait because they're riding the bus or those types of things for that. And so that information will come out later, but, um, but for the most part, yeah, if you have an open period, you're free to go. And you might get stopped and then you just tell somebody, it's easily verified, right? Yeah. Like, hey, where are you going? Oh, I have, I have an open period. And we just pull it up and we look and oh, okay, hey, thanks. Have a great day, see you tomorrow, that type of stuff. Yeah. And I know that that's a very specific, very senior, you know, senior type question. Um, but I, I know our seniors are just so, huh? They're here on the 22nd. So that's a good question. I know. I know. That was the one thing that they were like, they, they know where their classes are going to be. They know who their teachers are. They're, they're fully aware, but that's that one little piece that's new to them, which is the open periods that they're like, I don't even know what to do. Yeah. I don't know what to do. So yeah. Great. Um, my, I want, I wanted to make sure that these two comments, because this is kind of where kids are at, they're on one or the other. Um, and th this student wanted to make sure that this comment was heard. I honestly don't have any questions. I'm glad that we will be returning to school because this online virtual way of school is harder and complicated. Yeah. So, and I, and I wish yeah, I, I, you're right, and I hear that, right? I get it. Um, it. As a somebody with a son in high school, I understand that too. It has not been easy for for my own son. Um, and this eight weeks, this next eight weeks, is going to feel different because you're going to be around people, and I think that's a great thing. But we're still going to have to be disciplined um, as we learn because it's not going to the learning part of it's not going to feel a whole lot different. It's just going to be the location of where it is. And hopefully that motivates a lot of our students just being back around their, their friends, their peers and those things. Right. And then just having a, having a teacher, a caring, a caring teacher in the classroom, reminding them, Hey, you can do this, right? Like we're going to get through this, that type of stuff. So yeah, it's been hard. It's been difficult for, for you, you guys too, as teachers to try to navigate this, this new world um, and what it looks like. None of us as adults or staff trained to be teachers in a pandemic and have to teach fully online. Um, I know both of you have, have grasped the online world right away. You're kind of our early adopters anyway, as we were trying to do some of these things and, and go to a more online world and blended learning and things. So you were early adopters. So it was a little more natural for, for both of you, but it was still a lot of work and a lot of change. Yeah. And so what we expected of our students though, to be successful is just really, really hard to even fathom what they had to do, right? That, you know, when for students to have to suddenly lose all of that social support, the social networking that makes high school what it is, that the three of us can remember what that felt like and, you know, having that close group of friends that we saw every day, that really that was the reason we, we got out of bed and we went, we went to school probably, right? To see those, to see those friends more than certain other aspects or whatever. So I think that that was just kind of, the bandaid was just pulled off and they lost that opportunity. And I think that has a lot to do with how hard the actual online part of it will, was or right. is. So hopefully once we're back together and you, you have a little bit of opportunity at least to see other people walk in the hallways and know that you're not alone in the world, I think that's gonna help, help that feel better. Um, and soon, soon things will feel normal. And soon things will will look and sound normal, and we'll be we'll be back all as one big Mojave family, and then we'll just keep looking forward to that. Yes, love that. After that response, I don't even want to read the last comment because that was like such a positive note, and like this, <laughs> this one. You're right. I mean, it's I'm not negative. It. It's not negative. It's just not. It's it's the other end of that spectrum. That I'm excited, and then the other end is I don't have questions. I'm staying home because it's too risky. Mm. So I feel I feel like we should have asked those in a different order because <laughs> just like it's you know it's whatever it's fine. But I mean yeah. it's a valid concern. If I wasn't fully vaccinated, I would I would probably feel 
the exact same way. So yeah. I think I think I, I'm coming from a privileged place where I'm saying, let's not talk about it because I think that it's a valid yeah. concern because I know there's so many people who aren't fully vaccinated coming yeah. back into this. I, I think it's really valid. And for the, for those students that that have that concern, stay home. You know, with work cohort C, email me. Like if you need connection, you know, email us, you know, we'll, we'll do Google Meets, we'll do those kinds of things. I, I think it's really valid, right? Is um, I think I think COVID especially has been a real personal situation for all of us. Whether we whether we knew somebody that got really sick or whether we were, you know, seeing the news and all those kinds of things. So I don't think there's a right or wrong way to feel right now, especially, right? If you're somebody whose, you know, grandparents haven't been vaccinated, parents haven't been vaccinated, or you have a, a brother or a sibling or sister that that have some illnesses, yeah, I get it. You know, it's still risky. And so you should make sure that you're you're protecting your family. And especially as you two know, I consider Mojave a family. It's 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 my community. There's there's nowhere I'd rather be um, I think we have to look out for each other. And I know you guys are, you guys feel the same way about Mojave. You, you've adopted Mojave the same way that I have. Um, and so I think we have to think about that from that standpoint too. We don't want, we don't want somebody, somebody coming to school on the 22nd or after spring break. And then, and then they do, you know, somebody at home gets sick or something like that. So if it's not time for you and your family, it's not time. And that's great. You know, stay home stay, stay healthy. I think I end, you know, a lot of my emails to people, you know, stay, stay well, stay safe. And I mean that, um, not only do I say be great, I say, Hey, stay well, stay safe. I think those things are important. I think that's the, the part of our core values at Mojave is community and family and, and just loving each other well. And I think that's an important part of it. So I think it's a valid concern. And if that is a concern, stay home. And we, we love you just as much as if you were walking through the door every single day, that doesn't change how I feel about any students or any of our staff members even that had to make the difficult decision that, hey, I'm not ready. Um, I have a risk factor, so I'm not coming back, right? Take care of yourself if you can. I think that's important. And we'll love you just as much and, and just as well as we can, whether you're physically here or whether, whether you're staying online. Yeah. And now is definitely the time to be selfish with health. Like not even just for yourself, but I think before COVID, we all knew that we all had different, you know, people that we were around, but mm -hmm. I don't think any of us ever really thought about that of people that we're also around. So yeah. it, it, it made us kind of imagine those webs of people that are connected to each one of the people that we know. And so I feel like there shouldn't be any shame in choosing to stay home. I, I feel like that is, and that's what I feel is maybe why I thought at first that it was kind of negative because it's kind of seen as like, oh, you're just too scared or or, oh, you're just too nervous to go back. So yeah. I'm happy that that you're promoting that message of health because that's how, I think that's how a lot of those people who don't want to come back are feeling or kind of guilty at the same time. Yeah, so. yeah I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think and rightfully so, right? I mean, as, as you as you both know, I, I've taken this very seriously. I wasn't yeah. doing anything. Um, because I didn't want to, I didn't want to put my mother in risk, right? Like, you know, my mom's high risk population. And um, I want, I want Matthew to have bonus years, as many years as possible with, with his grandmother. And, you know, on the other side, you know, with his, with his mom's parents, you know, we were, we were all really cautious and making sure that to, to his detriment, right? I mean, poor Matthew, because he has grandparents and parents that, need to be super careful he had to give up a lot and yeah. our students have been the same way right yes. um and i don't think any of us were wrong for making those decisions either way if you were somebody that said hey you know what i want to i want to continue to have some sense of normalcy i don't think that was wrong i think we all made what was very personal decisions and and our and our students had to make those decisions and they had to grow up really fast and when we were talking before about how proud we were you know, I think that shows when they're advocating for themselves, right? Like, hey, you know, just having that question, Mr. Cole, I don't feel safe. The, and I'm sure the reason isn't for herself or himself, whoever asked the question. I'm sure it's because of my grandparents. Yeah. Right. You know, I live with an extended family or it's because I have a brother or sister that's that's sick or have a compromised immune system. Right. So just thinking about that, that just makes me that much more proud. Right. That that we have a we have a group of students at Mojave and a group of people that just put others before themselves. I think that's yes. amazing. 
just that 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 we would have 14 to 18 year old students um, thinking that those terms, hey, I want to make sure that my aunt is safe and healthy. So I'm not ready to come back. Great. More power to you. That's awesome. That's, that's amazing. We have got some of the best students in, I wouldn't even just say in Las Vegas, in North Las Vegas, in Nevada, in the world, sure. in the world. Our students are empathetic, sympathetic, and so, so on track yeah. with the kind of kindness that we want to push out into the world um, in our future generations. And, and I am absolutely in love with all that we do at Mojave to foster that environment. Um, Mr. Cole, thank you so much for just being such an amazing leader um, for, for our school, for our students, and for us, the staff. I don't think that you hear this enough, but we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm never scared that you are not going to worry about our, our safety. I'm, I am beyond thankful, beyond appreciative. Yep. I can't wait to get back there and see um, all of you instead of half of you. <laughs> Thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. Hey, kids, just to let you know, on March 22nd, you will be returning to the building if you are a ninth grader or a 12th grader. And if you are an 11th grader or a 10th grader, you will be returning after spring break on Tuesday, April 6th. We are so excited to see you back. We cannot wait to have your energy and your love all up inside the building. And if you are not returning, you just get to be a part of the action as well. Everything is about to change for you, friends, but it's about to change for the better because we are rolling right back into the school building and we are doing it as safely and cautiously as possible. So please... Please be excited about what is to come. Thank you so much, Mr. Cole. You are awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.